Las Vegas, famous, fabulous playground of the West. A wide open town that never goes to sleep. I don't care if the sun don't shine. I do my drinking in the evening time when I'm in Las Vegas. Get ready for one full hour of Vintage Vegas. This is Vegas Nights Tales, the radio show. These three dealers have spent their time in the gaming pits, and now they're talking. Growing up in 1950s Vegas, breaking into the mob-run casinos in the 1970s, they'll tell what it was really like in the golden era. The art of dice and cards, mobsters and muscles, starlets and harlots. The real story from guys who lived it. Now, let's bring on the hosts. Here's Benny Baccarat, Danny Craps, and Jimmy Bags. This is Vegas All Net Radio, the final frontier of free speech. Views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and guests, and do not necessarily reflect those of Vegas All Net Radio, its affiliates, or its parent company. Las Vegas, famous, fabulous playground of the West. A wide open town that never goes to sleep. I don't care if the sun don't shine. I do my drinking in the evening time when I'm in Las Vegas. Get ready for one full hour of Vintage Vegas. This is Vegas Nights Tales, the radio show. These three dealers have spent their time in the gaming pits, and now they're talking. Growing up in 1950s Vegas, breaking into the mob-run casinos in the 1970s, they'll tell what it was really like in the golden era. The art of dice and cards, mobsters and muscles, starlets and harlots. The real story from guys who lived it. Now, let's bring on the hosts. Here's Benny Baccarat, Danny Craps, and Jimmy Bags. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. You listen to the Vegas Knights Tells right here. Benny Baccarat, Danny Craps. Danny, let me ask you a question. We're missing somebody. Where's Bags? Where's Jimmy Danny? Bags? Jimmy Bags. There's an empty seat there, but I do have some news for all you Jimmy Bags fans. Jimmy Bags is on the lam right now. I uh, understand he's being tailed. He's up uh, driving somewhere up north. Uh, but, you know, they don't call them bags for nothing. So I think a few unmarked cars are following oh. the bag man, bags, if you know hey, what I mean. I hope you get away, bags. We hey, need you back here, brother. Jimmy, you know you're going to foil them again. <laughs> yeah, the bags, bags. Remember you could always tell the gumshoes because they wore those, uh, uh, what, what, the, the black, uh, what, what were those shoes called? They used to all, wing tips or wing, whatever? Oh, the wing tips. Wing tips. You remember the wing tips? Sure, I remember the wing tips. I could always spot a flat foot. <laughs> remember a lot of them put taps on, too. Oh, the taps, remember yeah. The taps on that? Taps, yeah. The shoes? But they didn't, ha- they didn't do any soft shoes. No, they didn't. They tapped on your head. <laughs> I, got a couple of, I got a couple of indentations to prove it. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they did hurt. There's no doubt about that. We got a couple of shout outs today we'd like to say. There's, a, there's one that we, uh, we really uh, want to get out there is uh, Tommy Davies. You know, he's, uh, where, he's root, uh, Rancho Cucamonga, isn't he? He's, uh, he's uh, resting comfortably in Rancho Cucamonga. And, uh, you know, uh, Benny, uh, Tommy Davies and I go back to high school. Yeah. We were in high school together, and then we ended up uh, years later working together at Caesar's Palace. Caesar's Palace. In wow. its heyday, baby, in its heyday. Table for table, uh, money, women, uh, sex, drugs. You had all that? Sound then? familiar? Oh, boy. Does all, it. all on a weekend. <laughs> all on one weekend. Oh, it only, I did it one day. You guys are slipping. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little slow. A little slow. Anyhow, we want to give a, a shout-out to Tommy there. Tommy, uh, you know, uh, we miss you, brother. We miss you. We do. And, and you know, Tommy, uh, you know, his, uh, he's got quite a f- – his family's been around a long time, the Marabellis. Marabellis, yeah. They've Babe been here Marabelli. quite a while. They sure. used to own the Hyde Park uh, uh, liquor uh, bar right mm-hmm. over there on um, – I believe it's on West Charleston and uh, Arville. Arville, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they've been in town here for, for a long time. Great family. Great Fantastic, family. Fantastic. Tommy, we love you, baby. Yeah, we love you and we miss you. Hurry back to see us. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, we, uh, funny thing, me and uh, 
me and here and Danny, we were out running around. You know, where'd we end up yesterday, Danny? We were at the Gambler's General Store on 800 South Main Street, where it's been an iconic general store for gambling equipment, books of every variety on gaming and horse racing, you name it, and uh, history of mobsters in Las Vegas and different uh, mobster families that uh, all eventually I- I- uh, filtered down to Las Vegas. Oh yeah, they've got uh, they got everything in that store. But what's new there that uh, we've discovered? You know, they uh, they've actually they got uh, a gambler's cafe in there that uh, that I, I was amazed because they they carry boar's head meats in there, oh. and that's that's expensive than boar's head meats. Oh, it is, it and is. Sandwiches Benny. and everything they've got in their salad sandwiches, they're all off the well, off well, the chart. We well, Benny, there. Benny, what did you eat there? Uh, I had yesterday. a hot pastrami sandwich. And I had to split it. I, I couldn't eat it all. It was it was humongous. It oh was, my God! It was huge. And the, the salad you had, oh. you had to split it. You couldn't I, eat it. I, I, I had a I had a salad that was unbelievable. It had everything you could imagine in it, and more. And was it delicious? The the workers down there were fabulous. Uh, everything is made fresh. Uh, everything is made. They don't even have a microwave oven in there because they don't believe in zapping anything. No, it's all done fresh right there in front of you and everything. And uh, John, he come in. You need to go down and say hi to John. He, uh, I mean, uh, Robert, we had a lot of fun just talking with him. Just what a great reminiscing, guy. What reminiscing a great guy. There. Exactly. And. You know, it's open from uh, Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 3. You can also get breakfast there. So, you know, if you don't want to go to a casino and, uh, you know, patronize them, you can go to the gambler store, have breakfast, browse around. They've got uh, gaming tables in there, like I said, and books of every variety for uh, the enthusiastic uh, gambler. They've got everything in there, cards, dice, tables. I mean, it's all for sale, slot machines. They got it all. Uh, they, you know, you need to get down there, take a look at it. It's, uh, it's really neat. You know, Benny, you've made me hungry. I think after the show, I think we should all go back down there and uh, well, have ourselves a, a, you know, they've named some of those sandwiches like they got the double down. Yeah. They go hit me once, hit me twice. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. You know, Aces, they, and uh, they've a, got, uh, yeah, Deuces yeah. Wild. They got all that Deuces stuff. Deuces Wild, yeah. Deuces Wild. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love that. Of course, me, I had the Baccarat. <laughs> of course, he had the Baccarat, which is named after Benny. Yeah, it was uh, it was a great sandwich. Yes, uh, head down there. They got everything down there. Please take a look down there. Yeah, nice. did, go on uh, go on our our recommendation. Like I said, we we've eaten in every place that's still there and that's not there, and we can tell you it's right up there with the best of them. Actually, Avery uh, Cordova, he's uh, he's the owner of that. Avery Cordova, yeah, Mr. Cordova. Yeah, give you a shout and, out. Uh, hey, give Avery. you a shout out, and it's a great place. Anyhow, moving on, we're going to uh, move on. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Fremont Street, uh, how that's changed over uh, over the years since we were uh, hanging out. Well, you know, there. Benny, we have a personal experience with Fremont Street because we grew up on Fremont Street. Yeah, that we did. We didn't have the typical playgrounds. Fremont Street was our playground. That's true. We were brought up there as little kids. Uh, I mean, I, I think I was five or six that I can remember walking down Fremont Street, going in and out of all those little stores, <coughs> you know, in the, uh, you know, the theaters and everything down there. Uh, we, had, we had a blast. Trader Joe's, all that. We what was the there. first uh, uh, movie theater in uh, downtown Las that Vegas? That was the Majestic. The yeah. Majestic. That was on 2nd and Fremont. It's wow. where the old post office used to be, right next door to it. See, which, people don't uh, realize that the post office was originally right there. Yeah, it was right there, second in Fremont, and uh, that in turn come to be the Golden Nugget. That's right, the Golden Nugget, unbelievable. The Golden Nugget took that over, and uh, you know that was uh, that was called the Million Dollar Casino because of the sign they had. They had a sign, in fact, it was a neon sign that well, was. Benny, I always wondered, so much neon back in those days. Where did that neon come from? I. I've been mystified because I've been looking at them lights all my life. Well, actually, it originated in uh, 1912 by the French. The French did that. Uh, they invented it, and it eventually came out here. Uh, it came out here on Fremont Street in 1928, I believe, was uh, the Oasis Restaurant is the first one. The Oasis it. Restaurant. Yeah, the Oasis wow. Restaurant had it. Uh, that was the first neon signs. 
And, of course, you know, we don't have to tell you what happened after that, oh. after Hoover Dam opened and all I that. I thought the French only gave us the Statue of Liberty. Little did I know they gave us neon. They gave us neon and... Uh, Can-can. French fries. <laughs> <laughs> French <Just> bread. <laughs> French toast. Ooh la la. Hey, but you know what? The reviews. Also, the reviews. You had Lean Renault, Frederick Apcars, which was a big-time uh, French review show in... Um, Paris, France. That's exactly right. Minsky's. Minsky's. Minsky's a lot, uh, in this town. A lot of a influence lot. from uh, from the French. Yes, a lot of influence. Didn't they uh, I- also introduce the uh, in the cat houses in the early early days the French tickler? French tickler. Wasn't that a little guy with the feather? I think he was. Yes, <laughs> and he had real real shaky hands too. Yeah, the the neon lights was 1912 when it was uh, when they were invented, and 1927s when it did come out here. That's unbelievable, and, and and as we all know, that is as iconic as another uh, thing that I'm going to do right now to jog people's memory. What if I do this? Howdy, partner. What am I saying, and who is it? Oh man, that's uh, that was Vegas Vic. For over the Pioneer Club. Vegas Vic, over the Pioneer now, there's Club. There's an icon. That was a, uh, a sign erected that was a, a big cowboy smoking a cigarette, of all smoking things. Smoking a cigarette. He had his right arm just going back and forth saying, Howdy, Howdy partner. partner. Had a deep voice. That went on. Uh, that sign was up there till uh, 1995 when they, uh, they put the, uh, the, the Fremont Experience was uh, was made in there they ended up having to stop his arm because it was hitting into the uh the roof canopy that were, canopy that they were putting up so they ended up stopping that and of course the voice stopped with it so. that's a shame because that was iconic i mean yeah i remember my relatives uh would come down from california and of course you know a lot of them didn't speak english but they knew how to say how the partner how the partner they did you and know it was uh in and fact uh that was erected on the other side of the street uh, but it wasn't any moving sign. It would just had a picture of the cowboy that had an arrow pointing to the Pioneer Club. Uh, speaking and of arrow, uh, didn't uh, somebody shoot arrows at Vegas Vic? <laughs> they did. During they, uh, the filming of what movie? They were making The Professionals. Yes, which The was Professionals. A movie. And it was Lee Marvin and Woody Stroves. Uh, apparently got, uh, got a little bit uh, drunk. Got up in a room and was uh, shooting bow and arrows at uh, Vegas Vic down there. Well, wasn't somebody dangling a hooker uh, uh, out the window? Yeah, it was, supposedly. Uh, that was supposedly. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. As a joke, and uh, they ended up bringing her back in. But uh, yeah, that uh, that was actually happened. You know, there's so many stories within stories about, you know, even downtown Fremont Street, which we'll get into after this commercial message. All right, we'll be right back. Welcome to the Vegas Nights Tales. Now, let's return to the Vegas Nights. Hey, welcome back. Listen to the Vegas Nights Tales right here. Benny Baccarat, Danny Crafts, talking a little bit about downtown. Benny, before we get back to that, I, uh, I want to give a shout out to Chapo Guzman, who oh, there you have it. for $50 million will get you out of any jail in the world. Any jail. Oh, my gosh. Well, I think they should, uh, he should tunnel his way over to Las Vegas. We've got some specials, Chapo, so come on down. Come on down. Love We'd to love hear to from have you. you. <laughs> yeah, in fact, it, uh, that shirt says it all right there, don't it? One of my peoples is a billionaire. Uh. El Chapo, orale. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we... Getting back to the the Fremont Street, we're talking about uh, one of the uh, one of the famous hotels. That probably a lot of people don't even know about was the uh, the Meadows Hotel. It was the first hotel built down there on East Fremont, right there by Boulder Highway. It was actually a complete casino, hotel, restaurants had it all. Reviews, and that was uh, what the one of the photo. Uh, it was a it was a prototype for what was to come up and down Fremont Street uh, and uh, and also some of the uh, joints that ended up being on the strip. That's exactly I mean, right. They took, you know, I mean, they, they saw the prototype and said, hey, look, everything is encompassed in this uh, Hotel The Meadows. You got uh, gaming, you got rooms, you got restaurants, and, uh, and that's when it took off. Actually, The Meadows was an iconic place that, that propelled the other ones into doing the same thing. Yeah, it, it only lasted three years. I think it was open for three years and it ended up burning down. 
uh, they opened it up there because, uh, you know, when they were building Hoover Dam or Boulder Dam then, uh, everybody was, uh, you know, thinking they were going to stop there and they ended up catching fire, burnt down. Never did reopen. Why did, they, why did they just leave it Boulder Dam? I mean, to me, Hoover Dam, I know it's named after a president, but I think of uh, Hoover vacuum cleaners. <laughs> and that sucks. Yeah, that, that does suck. <laughs> without the attachments. Without the attachments. <laughs> yeah, and it, uh, it did. It, uh, why they named it, I just because of the president, I guess. At the time. It confounds me. Yeah. Well. It, I, I like Boulder Dam. I really do. Yeah, Boulder Dam. I was used to saying Boulder Dam most of my life. All your life. Now I go to, go, I go to a Hoover. Yeah, you go to a Hoover. I got rid of my Hoover. I'm, I'm using a Swifter now. Yeah, Ooh. Swifter. Ooh, it's a lot quicker. Oh, it does a lot. It gets to in them tight corners, too, Benny. <laughs> Ooh. We'll, we'll lift a bowling ball up. Well, I haven't tried that yet, but it might be right up my alley. Ooh. <laughs> so anyhow, I... Uh, Tony Canero. There's uh, the one that took a... Uh, Tony Canero, the builder of the Stardust. Yeah, the but Stardust, but actually it was the Starlight. The begin. Starlight. How many people know that? Yeah, after he went to the uh, the Meadows and looked at that, they gave him uh, the insight to doing the uh, the Starlight. The Starlight, yes. And he ended up dying, and of course they, uh, they changed it to the Stardust. Well, you know, they had a little thing. Starlight, Star Bright, let me roll this hand tonight. That's it. Huh? That's I didn't it. mean to make the wrist action so... Realistic. Hey, back to the Hoovers, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I need a I need a new dirt bag. A new dirt bag. <laughs> uh, he was uh, Tony Canero was real good friends with uh, Billy Wilkerson, who uh, Billy Wilkerson, know, who was a flamingo, who was um, built nearly all the flamingo. Billy Wilkerson doesn't get enough credit. He was uh, really one of the pioneers of of making this town what it is today billy wilkinson yes he absolutely. was absolutely yes he was a, a man of uh, a vision he really yeah. was yeah he uh, like I said he had it nearly uh, all done he was what four hundred thousand short uh from having it completely completed and then he had to go he had to get in bed with some uh, some fellas and as we all know uh it spreads like cancer yeah that's true that's true and you get taken over yeah, and then you're and done and you're out then you had the Northern Club, the Las Vegas Club. The Northern Club, one of six casinos to be licensed after gaming was legalized in 1931. As we all know from a previous show, the first person to be licensed was, you'll love this one, ladies. Who, Benny? That was uh, uh, Mayhem Stalker. Mame Stalker, that's Mame right. Mame Stalker that's is right. the one that built that. That's right. The so. first woman to actually get the license and then five other, uh, other people... But what's amazing is Fremont Street, as we know it, uh, back then they were all little dinky storefronts. They had dress shops, they had shoe shops, everything up front. People walking down the street, that's all they would see. But in the back was the gaming. So uh, they were yes. little dinky uh, storefronts. That's, that's what a lot of people don't well, realize. And, and you know, Benny, Fremont Street was the center of the universe for many, many years because you had... You had uh, a grocery store down there. You had the sweet shop. You had uh, uh, Rexel Drugstore, Woolworth, J.C. Penney's, Sears and Roebuck at the time, and Ronzoni's, where you could Ronzoni's. get your uh, get your clothes and get your feet X-ray as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. White Cross Drugs. They had. Uh, 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 it's amazing what they had. Little Partners, there. where you got your Western wear for. For actually daily wear, I mean, people wore Western every day. They they forget this. What they think of it all as mobs and suits. But let me tell you something: a lot of people, even them, were wearing Western wear boots. All of them were. Look that's at Abe Schuler. Abe Schuler, yeah, that's right. He used to. He was the rhinestone Jewish cowboy, and I knew him personally. Yeah, he used to come in. I remember him coming in uh, quite a uh, quite a bit to the hotels. You'd see him all the time. Well, yeah, you he had the fishing. He had the fishing show from Lake Mead. Go fishing with Abe, and uh, he was stationed at the Dunes Hotel. And I used to see him uh, every night because I worked there off and on as a busboy and various other positions. And even gave him a, a, a ride to uh, to his apartment, which was the Century Apartments, which was upscale apartments where the Howard Hughes. Uh, buildings are oh, down uh, Howard Hughes Drive. Oh yeah, right, right? down there on Twain uh, and uh, Paradise. Before right it became that Sands area. Boulevard, that was Twain to mm -hmm. Paradise. Twain to Paradise. That's Everybody right. knew that. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's uh, that's all changed. I mean, this whole town's no. changed drastically. But 
the downtowns really uh, did a lot of change. And I mean, they, these these hotels they <laughs> they were bought out and sold, bought out by different uh, different people. It's uh, you know, like I said, the Gold Nugget they uh, they bought out they bought out three or four different uh, different uh, hotels. The Lucky Strike. They took that one over. Pioneer Club. Pioneer Club. They, they had to be five or six that they took over. Let's not forget they're about to close another iconic hotel tonight at midnight. Yeah, Las Vegas Club. The Las Vegas uh, Club that was owned by Mel Exber for many, many years. In yeah, 1931 that opened. 1931. That opened. Las Vegas Club and they're going to shut it down. Do you know in 1967 when I'd get off uh, work from uh, the Savoy Room coffee shop, I would take the bus to downtown, and I would go to the Las Vegas uh, Hotel coffee shop because they used to have specials there, and they had specials everywhere, but I always got a kick out of all the baseball memorabilia that they had. They had thousands of, do- I mean, uh, Roger Maris's bat, uh, Willie May, I mean, they had a lot. I used to just get a kick out of going there and looking at all the memorabilia at the Las Vegas Club, right. 1967. You could look at all that. You could sit there and go right next door and get them uh, shrimp cocktails all day long. I think it were 50 cents for great big old And remember, you, in the coffee shop, you'd sit there, and the window, you could see Main Street. That's true. You and, very you, well could. And, and you could see the train depot. Yeah. Yeah, the train depot. Wow. They uh, they had a uh, they had a w- they had a thing that they used to call people used to drive uh, it was called the donut. They start right well. Now? They started on East Fremont at the Blue Onion, right? And they would come all the way up and all the way to the train depot and make the circular drive, and they try to do it without hitting a red light, and that was called doing the donut. Doing the donut. Yeah, that isn't was, that uh, something. That is something. And me and Benny, we were cruisers too. We cruised up and down Fremont Street to the train depot, the circular driveway. I mean, that was one of the main things to do, and then end up at the Blue Onion. Yeah. Well, that was, uh, that's just the way it was. You know, for us back then, that was like American graffiti. Exactly. You know, we were up there driving up down, listening to, the, to our music at the time, trying to, trying to pick up girls to go on dates and stuff. That's and talk and stick your head out of the window of the car, and, you yeah. know, I'd be trying to get a kiss from a girl, and then the light would go, and I'd end up almost falling out of the car. <laughs> and, of course, people would be laughing and honking. Sure. That's just the way it was. Well, when I was 13, you know, I lived over off of Vegas and Valley Drive. I would take the bus, which was called the Golf Ridge, Golf Ridge Terrace bus and i would take the bus and it would drop you off on uh the street that were the uh um the trading post was what was it called back then um yeah well that, um uh, yeah <laughs> what, what, what was the name of that well that was uh what that they had indian jewelry and all that yeah, kind of had stuff all that. had the indian yeah. statues yeah the trading post right. but i just lost my mind for the for the name that wasn't Las Vegas Boulevard. That was, no, that no, was a th- up, that was Third Street, Third Street or Fourth Street. Fourth Street. Fourth Street. That's where Fourth Street. Yeah, the, the and you had Joe's. the trader, that Trader Bills. Trader Bills. Trader that Bills, and where the bus dropped you off was the circus room. Yes. The bus would stop there, and you go in the circus room, have a hot dog. Well, I was 13. I'd go down there, and I'd panhandle. I would go without any any shocks or shoes, socks or shoes, and Levi's in a T-shirt, and I'd take a tin cup. And people would say, how come you're... I'd say, my parents lost their money and they went back to California. And I need some money. And I would make enough money so I could go to the movies at the El Portel Theater and buy myself an ice cream and, yeah. you know. What was it, 35 cents back then, wasn't it? 35 cents. And an ice cream, with, ice cream cone was 10 cents. 10 cents. Oh, yeah. And how about, how about uh, high, as a kid, when you'd go downtown, you'd be ducking security, trying to go in and out the slot machines, trying to stick a nickel and pulling the handle, and then hoping, hoping that you didn't get caught. I oh, got yeah. caught a few times. Oh, yeah, you always get caught. I remember going through, uh, when you'd go into the casinos, they never had windows out front. They just had these, these big air vents. They had to be four foot wide, and they would blow down. Either blow down or up or whatever. It'd keep the air out. That's right. The hot air out, but it kept all the cool air. It was a pretty cool uh, invention. Well, how about, did that. how about when you'd go in front of the Las Vegas Club where they had the original one-armed bandits? They had the one-armed bandits. The Las yeah. Vegas Club had the original one-armed bandits. They were all cowboys with masks. That they did. I used to talk to them. 
but they never answered me. <laughs> they did, one arm bandits. They had, uh, what, the oranges, lemons? What was it, oranges, lemons? Was there any cherries bells, or watermelons? Bells. bells. Cherries, and, cherries and watermelons. Yeah, cherries and Cherries watermelons. and watermelons, that's, that's right. right. Do you know who ended up buying most of those? Steve Wynn. Steve Wynn bought them. He bought most of the uh, one arm badness. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder where they're at. Yeah, they're, uh, I don't know. I don't know, somewhere. Mr. Wynn, if you're listening, we'd like to know where the one-armed bandits are. Really <laughs> would. But getting back to Fremont Street and how iconic it was, uh, do you recall uh, in 1905 when Fremont Street became Fremont Street, how it started to develop from there? With them putting oak trees. Oh, they had all them oak trees that they put up in there. Um, and when... Fremont Street was the first paved street in 1925. First when, paved, and the first yes. red light came in in 1931. 19, that's correct. That's correct. And the first long-distance telephone call shortly thereafter in 1940. Was that when they had the switchboards? I wasn't around then. Remember the old switchboards? Oh, yeah, yeah, the switchboards. Well, I'm I w sure they did because they had them in the hotels, you know. And then, they, of course, they put in the, the speaker systems where they would page people. Remember the paging people? You don't hear oh, that too of much. Of course. Anymore. How about as a kid, you would call, you would call on the house phone, you know, you know uh, paging Mr. Johnson or paging, or you could be creative, you know, uh, paging Mr. Nothing at all. <laughs> and they, they would repeat it. Mr. Nothing at all, telephone call. Remember that? Pick up the house phone. Yeah, all the hotels did that as a courtesy. Every one of them. They don't do it no more. No. no. No, they don't. They don't. It's a shame. You know, they don't do it anymore. So much has changed. But uh, Fremont Street will forever, as native Las Vegans, be emblazoned in our minds for most of the fun times that we had. No, it was just something that nobody can imagine what we, uh, what we got no. to experience out there. Grow up in, experience. It was the greatest times in my life. It was, it was. And what was called the, what was meant by the four corners on Fremont Street? What were they talking about? That was uh, the Gold Nugget, the Fremont, the uh, uh, Four Queens, and uh, what's the other one? Binions. Uh, Binions, horseshoe. Binions. Yeah. With the Golden Nugget and Binions fact, being on one side, the Fremont and the Four Queens on the other. That was Binions the Four Corners. Binions took over the El Dorado. If I'm not mistaken. They it was the El Dorado, yes. Eldorado. El Dorado before it was the, Benny Binion's, yes. And the Apache and the uh, Boulder before them. The Boulder Club, which yeah. our dads worked at back in the, in the middle 50s. Yeah, they, uh, they squirted uh, dimes. They, uh, that's what they call squirting dimes at the time. Oh, they were squirting, yeah, because I remember my dad said he was dealing dimes. Yeah, they'd squirt them out. Of dad's, he'd take them in the hand, just squirt them just out. Just squirt them out, huh? Well, listen, we're going to take a, a quick break right now. We'll be right back with you. Listen to the Vegas Nights Tells here. Benny Baccarat, Danny Kraps. Thanks Jimmy for Bags. Jimmy Bags. I hope you're uh, hiding behind that, uh, that tree over there. Now, let's return to the Vegas Nights. Hey, welcome back to the Vegas Nights Tells right here. Benny Baccarat, Danny Kraps, talking about downtown, having a pretty good time with this stuff. Straight out of Vegas, baby. Straight out of Vegas. Not to be confused of straight out of Compton. Straight out of Vegas, straight baby. Straight out of Vegas, man. That's right. We're, uh, we're definitely desert rats here. That's oh, we, we, we really had the real hoods here. Yeah. Did a lot of walking around this desert. That's for sure. Yeah, I dug a lot. Sure. Of, I, I did a lot of digging out there, too. <laughs> looking for quartz. Yeah, looking for quartz. Do you remember uh, going out there in the desert looking for horny toads? Oh, boy. I used to find them all the time. That and chuckawallas. Chuckawallas. You can't find either one anymore. Yeah. No, you don't see Where them. are they at? The pawn shops? They're at the pawn shops. They carry them there. They're all, uh, you can buy them there. How awesome was that? Uh, Benny, do you remember, like, you know, I'd, I'd go blow my uh, toques with the other guys when I was breaking in, which was like twelve, thirteen dollars, and then I'd go and I'd go to Stoney's over there because he knew my dad, and I'd go and pawn a watch or a ring or, or something or a TV, and he'd give me twenty dollars, and then I, you know, everybody pawned stuff back then, and they and got to know did. you. Yeah, we you know, all did. You had, uh, you know, sixty days to pay it. I always tried to uh, pawn off a uh, used cigarettes. I never did get that on. Uh, I think that was a smoke screen. <laughs> Yeah, uh, what uh, the year that uh, the train depot 
that ended up closing in uh, 1969. 1969. And if you watch the movie Diamonds Are Forever with Sean Connery and Jill St. John, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. Jill St. John. Uh, Robert e. Wagner's wife. E.J. Young wife. was the crap dealer in there. E.J. Young. Mm -hmm. Wow. I. You know what? I forgot about that. Yeah, big E.J. Young. He's not young anymore, is he? No, he's oh. passed away quite a few oh, years ago. Oh, but I'm sorry. Yeah, Dalhart, Texas is where he is from. Great big old. He was actually a sheriff, this guy. that used He to was. A uh, great big guy. And uh, I, dealt, I had the pleasure of dealing with him for quite a few years out there. Uh, at the Tropicana. Yeah, he was a uh, sheriff. He'd go and get some of these prisoners, take them around. But yeah, he starred in that movie. Uh, they called him Carrot Top, I think, back then. But The original Carrot Top. Yeah, original Carrot Top. Well, you know, if you, getting, if you watch that movie, you can see the actual construction site of where they were tearing down the, uh, the depot and going to put the Union Plaza Union there. Union Plaza, in place. 1971. That, 1971. Uh, that opened up. Yeah, yeah. And the original owners, Jackie Gone, uh, Cal Halsels, Halsels, and uh, the other person I'm thinking of. There was one more person. There was Jackie Gone and Cal Halsels and somebody else. But I guess they'll remain nameless. But yeah, those but were the two principals for sure. Can't remember. And then that. Jackie Gone ended up buying it all in, uh, I believe, in uh, 86. 86. He took it all over. He took it all over. Yeah, but what about remember. what about on Fremont Street? What was the first tallest building in the whole state of Nevada? Fremont Hotel. The Fremont Hotel. That That's the correct. Tallest. The tallest building at the time, and they had something else that was unique. They had uh, the first vertical garage. That's right. Vertical garage meant going up. Yeah. And uh, for downtown, that was huge. That was a uh, you know everybody wanted to park, of course, out of the sun, and, and that was. And that how about huge. the other thing? The first high-rise pool. First high-rise pool. It was on the fourth floor. Fourth floor. I know, because I used to sneak up there and go swimming until yeah. I got kicked out. That's right. Wow. Trying to pick up uh, uh, young tourist girls. I would try to pick them up from the pool, put them on my little Honda 50, <laughs> and uh, take them to uh, where no tourista ever went. Yeah, there you go. That was our motto back then. Yeah. Let me take you where you've never been. Have you never been? I was I'd so bad. I was so bad. But <laughs> hey, it was the environment we grew up in. We didn't. Uh, this wasn't like Norman Rockwell's painting Americana. It wasn't. It was a unique place with the neon from France, with the Howdy Partner, with the whole Fremont experience before the canopy. Yeah, that's true. Well, I tell you, you know. Back in 1945, they called them roadhouses instead of casinos. That's what they called them, the roadhouses. Road uh, the Black Cat was one of them, and the Red Windmill was another one. And they had a big sign above uh, both of those as you, went out, uh, as you went in, open all night long. All night long. Yeah, all night long is what they said. So that let everybody know they're that's, open 24 hours. That's before uh, Lionel Richie even sang about yeah. it. That's true. Right? That's right. All, all night, night long. long. Yes, yes. But yeah. I thought that was pretty. They were all roadhouses back then. That's that was right. pretty unique. And, and you know what was unique, too, is when there would be the Hell Dorado Parade, and every, Fremont Street was decked out with the floats and people on top of the buildings. Uh, people would be on top of M.J. Christensen's Jewelers, which was right there on that corner spot, right across the street from the Fremont Hotel. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the law offices back then, uh, you know, everybody was watching the parade and dressed up and the floats. And we would all be in Western wear. S -s Most of the hotels let their employees wear Western. It was almost like well, you had mandatory. It was mandatory. Mandatory to wear Western. And everybody wanted to. We were in a Western town. Wore the little badges. You know. Yeah. And uh, a big part of the whole, uh, big part of the whole thing. They let people grow beards for that. Well, month. they had the beer, beard, beard contests. Contest. And how about you get thrown in the Hooskow Kangaroo Court? Kangaroo they used to court. have. That's right. Yeah. And uh, you had to have somebody bail you out to get you out. That's exactly right. Which yeah. the money went for charity. It went all for charity. It was all good cause. Every bit of it. <laughs> and that's all gone. I mean, look at the horses that were all dressed to the hilt. Oh. All the and how about Ralph? Uh, Ralph would be leading the posse. 
uh, of uh, remember the Jeep Posse and sure. uh, and all those uh, fellas. All I mean, it was magnificent to see these horses coming down Fremont Street. All the Sunrise Riders, they uh, Sunrise Riders, I yeah, mean, uh, yeah, the Shriners. They you had all the Shriners, everybody, everybody, and uh, the floats. I, I, listen, the hotels. One of the most uh, uh, beautiful floats was actually from a place that Benny Bachra worked. The Tropicana float was one of the best you ever saw. Yeah, it was beautiful. With it had the, the big fountain. With the fountain. The showgirls, with the showgirls. And the showgirls. I mean, my God, they were in costume. and Oh, it, it was really a sight to see. And then if you didn't have enough uh, fun there, you just go down uh, uh, Las Vegas Boulevard um, south, and uh, where Cashman Field is would be the State Fair. And, and, State Fair. and the rodeo. Rodeo and the fireworks at night. And the fireworks. I mean... They had everything there. They had museums. They had all the fantastic rides. Fantastic time I mean, just, as a uh, kid, really. You know, it was. It was great. Great growing up. Oh. The roller rink right down the street from that. I, it just go on and on and on. You know, I, I didn't realize that when they, uh, the ori- when they built the original uh, uh, train depot that it was Spanish archi- architecture. And, of course, they had 63 acres of property that they bought from the Union Pacific Railroad. Yeah, Union Pacific had that. They still got it. And then later on, it changed into a more uh, modern Art Deco motif, which is what we remember. Yeah. Because they used to have, remember they had the uh, little restaurant over in the depot? Sure. They had a roundhouse there, too, which was one of the first out here if they ever heard of a roundhouse. What is a roundhouse? It's where they could... Put the uh, the box car in or the 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 engine of it and and sit there and turn it around to any track they wanted it to go to. Oh, I've seen that before. That's what a roundhouse is, yeah. huh? Either, either that or you should know what a roundhouse. Well, is. Well, I've been hit been by a couple of roundhouses. I'll yeah. tell you that, and I saw more stars than they had at uh, uh, Jerry Lewis's telethon. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, which was another house. iconic thing every year. The Jerry Lewis telethon which would bring out all the stars. You could go and sit there in the audience and see every major star at the time, from the Rat Pack, Ava Gardner, Rita H- I mean, he had everybody. Had everybody on there, and uh, they'd, they'd televise it, so it was, you know, it was like, I don't know if it was worldwide, but it was all over the United States. Televised. And every act that was in town would go over and hang out with Jerry Lewis for a while, to help Jerry's kids. That's true. Muscular dystrophy. Even all the stores, all the grocery stores had uh, things for uh, Jerry Lewis Telethon. That's right. Throw your That's change right. in. They made a lot of money off that. You know, and that speaking of stores, speaking of Western stores, how about the Row? Oh, the Row. Wow. The Row. There you go. That's t- that's going back now. Huh? And you remember the guy that used to do, I think, I don't know if he was the owner, you'd do the commercials, and he'd, get, he'd go, come and do your shopping at the Row. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's uh, it's amazing. You sit there and you start thinking about as a as a kid what you used to see and run into that you took for granted that was going to be there forever. Yeah. Like right. when you'd go downtown to get your uh, your uh, your shoes, where would you go? Well, Fl- you'd go to Floorsheim was there. They had uh, Gallon Camps. Gallon Camps. Yeah. Wow. As a kid, Gallon Camps was oh, uh, yeah. was where we go. They, but they had Floorsheim well, down there. My first pair of uh, cowboy boots was from Rex, uh, Bell. Rex Bell Jr. store yeah. next to the El Portel Theater. Yeah, Rex and, Bell. And uh, I got my first cowboy boots there, and, uh, you know, I was proud to wear those. Uh, I everybody was, was. Everybody had cowboy boots. Everybody bought them. I, I remember always trying to imitate John Wayne as a kid, you know. Oh, we all did. You know, all did. Listen up, Pilgrim. Hey, Pilgrim. But, uh, yeah, I, and in fact, uh, that was my highlight, dealing to him. That's right, Benny Bakra. Tell that uh, John Wayne story. Well, I, I've told it before on here. I don't like boring people with the same stuff, but I did. I got to deal to him and uh, and uh, James Arnaz and uh, and Clint Clint Eastwood all at the same time. They were there for the benefit or the opening of uh, right. of uh, that singer uh, uh, you, Neil Diamond. So I got to deal to them. That was pretty exciting for me. Do you think when uh, Clint was there dealing, uh, playing craps, he uh, was thinking uh, for a few dollars more? For a few dollars more. For a few dollars more? Yeah. I know he wasn't Rowdy Yates. He wasn't. Did no. he have a fistful of dollars? <laughs> <laughs> I think he had some of those taken from him. Yeah, but that was the highlight for me, get to deal to those, uh, those three. They were huge. You know, back then they were the, as big as you get. Oh, uh, that had to, that uh, that had to have been so special. Yeah, it was. It was special, so special, uh, special time. 
And I, they were all in suits. That's what was uh, amazed me. They wasn't cowboy. Were they? they were in suits. They were in suits, huh? Yeah, they were there for a benefit. Who was the, who was the biggest? I mean, as far well, as James Arnaz was the tallest. Oh, he was six five, six six, wasn't he? Yeah, he had to be six six. Uh, then, it, then of course, John Wayne. I think he was six four, and then uh, Clint Eastwood. He had to be six two, six. You know the story of how James Arnaz got to be on Gunsmoke? Uh, no, uh, I know his brother, but I don't know exactly. He, uh, they wanted to give uh, the spot to John Wayne, and he said, "No, I got somebody to be perfect. You're going to love this guy," and he's. John Wayne is responsible for James Arness becoming uh, Matt Dillon on Dillon. Gunsmoke. And as we all know, how many decades did Gunsmoke? I mean, today, my mom and I watch Gunsmoke. That's, that Still. was the longest-running uh, show out there. Oh, I, I mean, you know, you, you had uh, uh, Chester, and you, then after that Miss you had Kitty. Festus. Yeah, you had Festus. Miss Kitty. Did, Miss Kitty never knew that she was going to have a, a, a line named after her. Miss Kitty. Miss Kitty. And speaking of Miss Kitty, do you see what's around my neck here? Can you see that? I did see that. This right here says the Pussycat a go go. This here you don't find. It does. Pussycat a go go. That's uh, that's that's something you just don't see anymore. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> the Pussycat a go go opened in 1968. Yeah. And uh, I was uh, 16 and a half years old with a fake ID. And I painted a mustache, and I went in there, and I told him my name was Pepe Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew. Yeah, I really stunk up the joint, though. Yeah. But I was in there, and when I first went into the Pussy Catagogo, they had two uh, 21 tables, which seems like no one ever won. And they had a girl behind the bar with the tassels dancing, a couple of girls dancing in the back. And uh, it was real shady. You didn't want to play 21 in there. Because for somehow you just never got lucky. No. And then um, there's a reason why. And then uh, Mike LaMonica and his partner, which you are familiar with, Mike LaMonica, I believe. Uh, yeah, I worked with him. He was a baccarat dealer, correct? Yeah, he was a baccarat dealer. I worked with him. And oh, I think it's time to talk about the new uh, FDA. Uh, uh, what do they call it? Viagra for women. We won't keep you up long, too long. We'll be right back and listen to the Vegas Nights Tales. Take a quick, uh, short break here. The FDA won't. Uh, let us. Now, let's return to the Vegas Nights. Hey, welcome back to the Vegas Nights Tales. Right here, Benny Baccarat, Danny Krebs, Missing Jimmy Bags. Anyhow, uh, Danny, uh, what was Fremont, who was Fremont named after? Does anybody know? Well, you know what? That was one of my Jeopardy questions. Uh, John Charles Fremont, the John explorer. Ch the explorer. How about that? Yes, he was one who made that whole famous. Well, sure, he came with my cousin Rivera. Rivera. You know when he said, "Hey, look, the meadows." <laughs> the meadows. Yeah. It's got water. Las Vegas. <laughs> they got agua, which yeah. is water, y'all. Water, y'all. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, there was another uh, quote from somebody uh, talking about pavement. George Foley. George Foley Sr., yeah. another iconic name in the great state of Nevada. Uh, when they first uh, paved Fremont Street in 1925, which was about it, he said, if you wanted to see any more pavement, you had to go to Barstow to see it. Yeah, Barstow, 150 miles away to see that. Yeah, that's a growing town. Oh, well, they hey. They got a McDonald's in there now. Don't they, have, uh, don't they have the big space needle there or the big uh, uh, the thermometer? The uh, thermometer. That's in Baker. Oh, that's in Baker. Oh, yeah. oh. They well, got the, that working. They do? Yeah. Oh, it's working now, huh? Yeah, I drove by it not too long ago. Yeah, it's up and running. I'm sure glad that that thermometer uh, never ended up in the hospital. Yeah, I'm surprised it didn't end up in a sign company over Cause here. Because I, I, re I remember my f when I had my tonsils out at Rose de Lima up in Henderson. Wow, that was the that was Next one to of the, the titanium plant. Yes, That's it was. Right. And uh, I that was... was the uh, best hospital in town, bar none. I was, uh, I think I was six or seven, and I remember the girl saying, turn over. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> next thing I know... There was a thermometer going not in my mouth. Yeah, you rolled over then. I rolled over. I don't. Yeah. I, it took me a, a while to, be, to get back to me. <laughs> I see. <laughs> 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 yeah, they, yeah. That, I forgot about Rose de Lima. Yeah, that was Rose a, de Lima Hospital. I had my tonsils taken out of there in uh, 1958 or nine. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. of course, I had relatives that worked at the titanium plant, and they lived in Carver Park. Remember those boots I told you I got? Well, it was kind of a rough neighborhood. 
and I wasn't supposed to stray from the complex. They had rows of apartments, and they had little uh, swing sets in each one. But I wandered off like I normally do, and uh, four guys uh, jumped me, and they stole my cowboy boots. And they didn't do nothing to me, but the beating I got from my dad when I came back without my cowboy boots. He said, where's your cowboy boots? I go, these four guys, they jumped me. And they, didn't I tell you not to go to that con? Well, I got it beaten. Oh, sure. Yeah, they beat you. They beat you good, didn't they? He beat me good. They just they held me down and took my cowboy boots. Yeah. I cried all the way what home. What was the name of that little town going out there that you had to drive through? Pittman, Nevada. Pittman. Named after Val Pittman. Yeah. Val vale Pittman. Pittman. Yeah. Well, there, there's a there's a little town it was that the pits. Uh, you know you can throw a football through, but. Sure had a lot of fun going. They still got there. a couple of those little bars there on the side that haven't changed yeah. in years. Little pigs, three little pigs. The three little pigs, yeah. The three little pigs. Yeah, that's still that there. That brings up, uh, you ever have three pigs in a blanket? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's some wild times. Yes. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. You, did, you didn't have to go to Uncle John's Pancake House, which was on East Fremont East Street. Fremont. Remember Uncle John's Pancake House? Sure. I had my first chocolate chip experience there <laughs> right after Sunday church. Right after Sunday church. Well, I w while I was in church, everyone's praying. I'm praying for the chocolate chip uh, pancakes. Yeah. How about uh, how about Sambo's? Remember Sambo's? Sambo's, of course. I right know exactly where. Across from where's the Doula Center. That's right, Sambo's. Yeah, Sambo's, which, as we all know, uh, in Las it Vegas became Boulevard. a controversial name. Yeah, they had to uh, remove it. I, I missed the Frito heard. Bandito. I don't know how my people care. Hey, the Frito Bandito was cool. Yeah, I loved it. Cool. I had a teacher t-shirt that said the frito bandito yeah yeah That's i don't gone. know why why do people get so sensitive yeah. uh, if you listen to trump you won't be sensitive long that's true hmm? won't be at all sensitive. which we're going to have a show uh having some fun with uh the donald we're going to do we're going to have some fun we're going to do something that's really really it might even go as they say today viral it might go viral well back in the day viral meant you had an infection that's true huh that's true. You had to go to Rosalima to get it taken care of. Yeah, but that, that girl kept putting the thermometer up there. I didn't quite get that, you know. <laughs> you I learned not to go back. I remember when I was getting back to that, looking over, and I could hear the snap of her glove, and I knew it was coming. Yeah, luckily you had the snap of the glove. She said, don't tighten up, young man. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, uh, I forgot all about that place out there. That's, what, a nice, uh, what a nice place that was. God. Hey, uh, do you want to, uh, listen, I know that, they put the canopy there in, in 1994 is when the canopy went up. And, uh, but I, uh, to be honest, I, I'm, I'm not all that thrilled how it's turned out. It's, I mean, I'm saying the, the canopy is great, but what happens under the canopy, I, I'm a little mystified with, um, you know. Yeah, they've, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, that's, again, uh, I don't know the, the laws on what happens. That's a very controversial right now there's a lot of people from vegas who are upset about it but they let people sort of do what they want down there i had my mother down uh you know we wanted to go my my mother worked at the golden gate for 30 years and uh of course for her dedicated service she got a plaque which uh she put in a trunk and locked it away but we went down there to reminisce uh see what was going on and we saw a guy probably in his 50s all he was wearing was a yellow thong and some flip-flops. And I'm telling you, that, that was a sight that will forever be emblazoned in my mind. It was, my mom said, are you kidding me? And then there was people taking pictures with him. Come on. No, you got that and you got the ladies down there that got the duct tape. The duct tape? That's it, the duct tape. They I thought you... They like little pasties, yeah. Duct tape, huh? Yeah. Uh, you get that at the hardware store? Yeah, yeah you get that. I guess store. Ace is the place, huh? Well, listen. I just want to say thank you for listening to the Vegas Nights Tells, and uh, we uh, had a good time today. Hey, this was, this, this was fun. This was fun talking about Fremont Street and, and and a little bit of history for some of you people that didn't know some of these things, That's right. like us natives did. I mean. We've been around forever. Gambler's Cafe, here we come. Gambler's Cafe, I can't wait to have the double down.
Double down. I'm going to hit myself twice. Yeah, well, thank you for listening to the Vegas Nights Tales. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Danny Bakra, Danny Crap. Straight out of Vegas, baby. Straight out of Vegas. Yeah. And for all you crap dealers out there, keep the dice rolling, baby. Keep the dice rolling. And remember, five means no field. Jimmy Kimball, give us a call. Jimmy Kimball, baby. We got some dice for you. Holla. Hey.